Hello, thanks for giving me some time. I'm Lord Digby Jones. I've been an advisor to Harvey Nash now for some four or five years, and I have to say I'm as proud of being associated with Harvey Nash now as I was all that time ago. The company's going great places, and I just like to feel part of the family. Uh, tonight here in Birmingham, I've, uh, I've got about 500 businessmen and women from all over the Midlands who are coming to listen to the annual Harvey Nash lecture. And uh, I'm speaking tonight on an interesting subject, which is that we know, don't we, that business is good for Britain. But is Britain good for business? So I'm actually going to be talking about how business creates wealth, the only organ in our society that generates jobs and generates taxation. And then a public sector is born of that. And of course, we need the teachers and the doctors and the soldiers and the policemen. But they wouldn't be paid if it wasn't for tax. And there wouldn't be no tax if it wasn't for the wealth that's generated by business. But is Britain good for business? And you see, in a globalized economy where we all have choice, you know, you can't put a hospital or a school or a railway or a police station in another country. But you can put a car factory. You can put a money dealer's desk. You certainly can base the headquarters of a services company anywhere in the world and conduct it on the press of a button. And so on that basis, Britain has to try harder and do better if it's still going to be as attractive for business investment in Asia's century. So firstly, we don't have enough skilled people. We need better access to the reservoir of talent that should be coming out of our education system. And, you know, primary, universities, there's not one part of it which is, it, it can isolate itself from all those problems. Secondly, we need a taxation system that stimulates risk taking, that actually encourages to get into work at the bottom end. There's much more that could be done there. We need transport issues in southeast England sorted. We have to have a decision made on airport capacity in southeast England, Heathrow, Boris Island. In a way, I think we've got to the point where we don't mind what it is, as long as somebody makes a decision. And then at the same time, are we going to have the Quebecois effect up in Scotland? Two years there was before Quebec decided on not having independence. Those two years, business didn't invest there, didn't invest in Montreal or Quebec, went to Toronto sterilize the place because they weren't certain of the future and were their tax investing dollars going to be well used in a place they understood so they didn't go there well is that going to happen to Scotland for the next two years is Alex Salmon putting his hope of success in a year of the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow and the Ryder Cup in Glen Eagles and the anniversary of Bannockburn is he actually going to put that ahead of what's good for Scotland which is to keep encouraging investment in the United Kingdom and at the same time we need to be better led. We have to have better leadership in both our political and our civil realm. And I've seen a few examples of late where this government has, seems to have lost the plot on leadership and in various aspects of civic society, much the same story. Now we start ahead of the game. Without doubt, we're in a better place than virtually every other country in Europe and indeed some aspects of America. But it is Asia's century. This is Asia's time. And we have nothing to fear if actually we take ourselves forward equipped for business to say, yes, I'll do it in Britain, and then I'll invest it and trade with these getting richer people in Asia. But if we don't fix those things in Britain that need fixing, then Asia's century will leave our children in a very cold place indeed. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye.